Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday's trading the 6th of March 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of uh, the uh, European markets this morning, certainly taking their cue from Asia. Okay, we have a mixed session in Asia. We have the Nikkei. Uh, certainly lower by 90 points, while we'll see uh, Shanghai and Hang Seng certainly finished higher. Now, we have had a, um, a barrage of uh, negative uh, uh, news data or news stories uh, coming in in terms of the um, the actual uh, Asian session and uh, even the US session going into the close. We had uh, Miss Yellen certainly sounding very hawkish again. Okay, so therefore, obviously, that indicates... Monetary tightening, monetary tightening indicates interest rates are rising, interest rates are rising, hurt growth, reduce consumption, reduce investment, hurt emerging markets, etc, etc. The whole conclusion really is that you have negative growth, okay? If we have negative growth, that generally means that the markets, the stock markets need to discount that in. Thus far, the stock market has ignored uh, monetary tightening, tightening or uh, hawkish Fed. Uh, due to the fact that uh, it's certainly being cushioned by uh, this so-called hopium trade of fiscal stimulus via Trump. So uh, the monetary tightening certainly is being negated by Mr. Trump's antics. OK, so that certainly remains the theme. Now, how far can we go, given the fact that the stock market certainly, as you know, with regards to the S&P 500? I mean, look at the stellar move. If I bring up the chart of the S&P 500 for you and uh, show you the actual move itself. There we go. Okay, so you can see the move itself. I mean, let's just take uh, early November. Okay, so from November 2085, we're currently 2380. So we've basically rallied almost 300 odd points. Okay, uh, and uh, that certainly is one hell of a move. I mean, that's almost a 30% move. So ask yourself the question now, has fiscal stimulus been baked in? And uh, has uh, monetary, pol monetary uh, policy tightening uh, actually been factored in? The, from my understanding, really, is that fiscal stimulus certainly has been baked into the cake, but monetary tightening certainly hasn't, given the fact that uh, everybody expected Miss Yellen to uh, certainly look for excuses. Now, the excuses are over, really, and she's certainly going to, to go ahead, and March, obviously, hike is certainly live. So markets are going to face reality. Uh, dollar is obviously going to rise, and that's going to hurt sentiment. Now, uh, over the weekend, we've had multiple uh, arguments for the stock markets to move lower, especially U.S. markets. You have uh, the Trump-Obama debacle with regards to the wiretapping. OK, so news reports over the weekend that Mr. Trump's accusing of the Obama administration of, 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 of tapping his phone. OK, and uh, given the fact that uh, he certainly has a problem with Mike Pence uh, using the AOL email. OK, so the very thing they accuse Hillary Clinton of, they themselves are guilty of. So again... That certainly, uh, that uh, rumor uh, is certainly out. Or if we're not saying rumor, that certainly is confirmation. So, again, that's negative. Uh, you have Mr. Sessions recusing himself uh, again, uh, accusations of him colluding with the Russians, okay, and lying under oath. So, again, you have two fronts where the uh, Trump administration is certainly being attacked, and that's the reason why he's gone on the offense, okay, thereby accusing Mr. Obama. And again, this is all uh, costing political capital. Given the fact that he wants to put through fiscal stimulus, if he's going to create so many enemies, how on earth is he going to get that fiscal stimulus package passed? It's impossible, okay? There's no details on fiscal stimulus so far. It's, it baffles me as to why the stock market is still higher and keeping afloat, okay? So again, that's negative news. Also, we have Deutsche Bank concerns, okay, with their capital raising. We have Daimler recalling potentially 1 million uh, Mercedes worldwide. Again, that's negative. Although it has been negated by Peugeot's uh, purchase of uh, Opel from uh, GM. That certainly has uh, helped the uh, the actual auto sector, so just bear that in mind. Also, Aberdeen uh, and uh, Sander Life buying Aberdeen. That certainly has to help the FTSE 100 to remain afloat this morning too. In terms of uh, bearish news also, Mr. Juppé certainly uh, obviously uh, ruling himself out, okay, of the potential race for the election. Uh, again, that certainly negates, uh, uh, certainly does increase uncertainty in French uh, French. Uh, Political uh, French politics in terms of China, China cutting their growth over the weekend as well. Certainly, risks negative. We've had a bird flu uh, potential outbreak in, in America again, agriculture and uh, travel sectors. Uh, obviously, uh, stocks certainly under pressure today. North Korea over the weekend as well, test firing its uh, missiles and uh, potentially reaching a uh, the Japanese shores. So, again, bear that in mind. 
Uh, Nikkei obviously lower overnight. German banks uh, certainly arguing against the QE now, stating that QE is no longer needed. Therefore, obviously, you are looking at the rally in the euro. The euro did actually move above 1.06, which again is hurt, hurting exports. Okay. And uh, UK growth potentially being downgraded as we had weaker data on Friday. Now, as you can see there, there's a barrage and the list goes on in terms of uh, bearish arguments for the uh, the actual uh, markets to fall. So let's look at the technical picture now. Uh, before we do, let's just quickly go over the this morning's economic data just before we do. Uh, in terms of the Aussie, I'm not going to discuss the Aussie lift lead up for now, although I do trade the Aussie. Uh, Centix investor confidence in the Eurozone certainly increased. Uh, German PMI certainly increased. Uh, so again, net net helping the uh, the actual uh, eurozone this morning. Now let's just look at the technicals. Let's see exactly where the German DAX stands. Okay, so uh, German DAX. Let's go to the uh, daily first and foremost. Daily chart at the moment still an inside bar. If we negate the lower level at 11.915, then it opens up the bear case scenario down to 11.830 gap fill. So just bear that in mind. That negates above the actual uh, bull flag. Uh, in terms of the uh, German DAX, let's just take the pivot highs, create the pivot highs. We haven't closed the gap as of yet. Certainly bounced off pivot uh, S3 support. 10 minute chart at the moment, certainly bounced off pivot S3 quite sharply into previous support equals for resistance. So technically sound and certainly bounced very impressively. Now, again, that unfilled gap really is a target. You're, you're seeing a series of lower lows and lower highs. As you can see, the bears certainly are in control at this juncture in terms of, in terms of the German DAX. Moving on to the euro, uh, the CAC, French CAC now. So inside bar thus far, okay. The French CAC on the weekly chart certainly is into resistance, so just bear that in mind. Okay, you can see here horizontal resistance on the weekly CAC. 60 minute jar on the French CAC. Again, you have a series of higher highs and higher lows, but that certainly is vulnerable with given the uh, French political uncertainty, especially with Mr. Juppé. Everybody thought he would carry on in terms of his vote, etc., etc., and he's certainly, certainly potentially. Um, uh, negated so far so again you have the unfilled gap below at 4860 okay so that gap certainly is wide open from my understanding and my perspective let's go over to the 10 minute chart 10 minute chart really you have the unfilled gap above still remains weak okay just bear that in mind you have horizontal support below at 4950 okay so uh, really from my understanding if i if we do get gap fill that certainly is a shorting opportunity for me uh, in terms of the uh, European indices, looking for a lower high and then a lower low below. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Lower high, then lower low below. So that certainly is the scenario. And then obviously you have support at 4950 on the French CAC. So from my understanding, certainly bias remains bearish there. Okay, FTSE 100. FTSE 100 daily chart. You can see we're consolidating above the previous uh, uh, breakout range. You're holding that key support at 7340. Uh, the next support really is 7310 and then obviously horizontal support below so 7340 7310 two areas or two zones to watch out for that we may touch uh, the 60 minute chart clearly showing you a bear flag scenario so a bearish continuation pattern consolidation here so certainly an opportunity here to short the FTSE as well down to that uh, 7320 7310 zone okay so don't be surprised if you hit that 7320 7310 zone on the FTSE itself okay so again, certainly a bearish scenario here, from my understanding, my interpretation, lower lows, lower highs thus far, okay? In terms of the 10 minute chart, again, holding pivot S2 thus far, if we do fall below, then 7326, 7320 and 7310, all zones of potential support. So watch out for those support zones, okay, in terms of the FTSE itself. Okay, so Euro stocks now. Let's go on to the euro stocks, give you an insight here as to where the euro stocks is going. So the daily chart at the moment, really it's an inside bar consolidation. That's all we can see thus far. You have previous support equals resistance in that zone. 60 minute chart at the moment, just basically consolidating. If anything, from my understanding, it's a bearish consolidation. We're consolidating and then looking to flush lower, looking to test this support around the 3350 zone. So watch out below. 10 minute chart, euro stocks again just trading sideways, consolid bearish consolidation, gap fill obviously at 3402, very unlikely for my understanding given the bearish news out overnight in terms of North Korea, in terms of the Fed being hawkish, etc, etc. Okay, so again looking for potential support at 3370, if that cracks then 
you are 3320 below. So certainly a fast and, and uh, fast and ferocious sell from my understanding and my interpretation. Okay, I think that's a good summation. The video is long enough. Please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of that bonus. Goodbye.